Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at ways that we can come together and more effectively serve the Lord. Today, I have with us Judge Philip Whitaker. He is a Court of Appeals judge on the Arkansas Court of Appeals. He's also served in Arkansas as a circuit court judge and been in ministry for over 40 years. He's currently ministering uh, ministry of Worship at First Real Baptist in North Little Rock. So, Judge Whitaker, thank you for taking the time to be with us. You've got a pretty busy time with doing your uh, legal work as well as the ministry work. All that comes together makes you a pretty busy fellow, doesn't it? It does, but thank you, Dr. Moody, for giving me the opportunity to be here. And you've actually given me a respite from reading about some insurance contracts this afternoon, so I, I, I look forward to it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, I am glad to do that, my friend. Well, you know, we've had a lot of questions lately about COVID-19. A lot of churches ask questions. Should we assemble? Should we not? Is it required? Is is it not? And then even questions about can we have drive-in church? And people ask about the, um, the legal aspects of it, but it also per- puts our government officials in some difficult situations from time to time, doesn't it? Absolutely. This is, uh, I don't want to say it's uncharted territory, but it is obviously ground that uh, none of us in, in our generation have traveled before. And it is it is quite unique. Uh, obviously, the governmental authorities have some broader public interests that they have to be uh, concerned about protecting the general health of the public. And at the same time, being very cognizant of the First Amendment rights that we as American citizens enjoy, including the right uh, of freedom of religion. So it's a very it's a very delicate situation. And the government officials uh, desperately are uh, in need of our prayers for guidance as uh, they try to walk us through uh, what is somewhat uncharted territory for us. Mm -hmm. So it is hard. You're a mayor. You're maybe even a governor, even the president. You're you want the economy to do well. You don't want to infringe on people's rights, but you're also they're trying to help people to be safe as well. As churches and church leaders, what can we do? We you mentioned we need to pray for them, and and uh, we definitely need to do that. Are there other things we might be able to do to help to support them? Uh, during this time and to even make their jobs a bit easier? Well, I think one of the things that we can remind ourselves of is just some things that we all know, but, you know, for most of us since um, uh, middle school, when we took basic civics, you know, we, we don't really think about it too much. Uh, but, you know, in addition to just praying for those, let's remind ourselves of some, of some very basic uh, principles of our civil government. And yes, we do as Americans enjoy some very uh, firm and fundamental constitutional rights, most of which are encompassed in the First Amendment. However, one of the things that we need to remind ourselves of is that really none of those First Amendment rights are absolute rights uh, for years and years and years. Uh, Congress, executive orders, uh, judicial decisions have placed certain limitations upon constitutional rights, including uh, the right to what we call the right to freedom of worship. So while we cherish that right, it is not an absolute right. And so it's, it's, in, it's important to remind ourselves of that so that we can uh, keep that in the background as we're trying to decipher thoughts and feelings and uh, beliefs and strong passions that we have about this area, which is so dear to us. So a government official may, it may feel like they're limiting our rights, but actually it's within their purview, what they do as a government officials in particular situations uh, that, that may dictate that. And so I suppose we can be helpful by understanding that. Uh, going along with that, working with them, um, and and just remembering they're probably not trying to limit our rights, but it's just necessary at this particular time, perhaps to protect life and allow us to get back to normal much quicker. Absolutely. And, you know, 
this, I believe, is something that we will all work our way through. And uh, as churches, uh, we we ultimately believe that there is a higher authority as 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 men and women of faith. Uh, our confidence is is not in the federal constitution. It's not in guaranteed rights under the First Amendment. Our our confidence, our hope is in uh, the Almighty God. And so we know that with uh, patience and with rationality and with trusting in God and allowing him to lead us through, that this will pass and there will be a day when the limitations will be removed. We will be able to worship in the manner in which we want. And so I think it's important for us to just kind of keep in mind uh, what our Constitution says, what it doesn't say, and then to remind ourselves of who we really have our confidence and trust in. Mm -hmm. And so we're about the gospel. We're about the word of God. And there's guidance. Romans 13 is a, is a good passage. 1 Corinthians 9, where it talks about not asserting our own rights. Um, uh, the other thing, perhaps, even with 1 Corinthians 9, is to put ourselves in the shoes of some of these officials uh, sometimes people will say, well, they didn't say that we couldn't do this or, or we couldn't do that. I mean, I mean why would a official not just outright say, I'm not going to forbid you to meet or, or do a certain task? Well, what's kind of going through their minds as they're trying to navigate this process? Well, obviously, I think most public officials are very cognizant of people's faith and of people's beliefs. Uh, they, they don't want to do anything they can to infringe upon those beliefs, and they're going to take every possible caution not to do that. Uh, the guidelines that so far have come out have been that, just recommendations. They've been guidelines. And there have been churches that have said, well, you know, it's, it's just a recommendation. It's just a guideline. And because it's a guideline, it's not necessarily something that I have to mandate myself uh, to do. And, you know, we can therefore, as a local congregation, a church with autonomy, we can choose to continue to worship in the method that, that meets our needs. And while there is some uh, rationality to that, and while there is perhaps even maybe some spiritual principle behind the decision, one of the reasons the recommendation from the government was there was to protect the general public health, but also to protect the health of those local parishioners. And we've had situations here within my own state, the state of Arkansas, where unfortunately, uh, in the early stages of this, during the month of March, we had a church that uh, was continuing to meet. Uh, they unfortunately were exposed to the virus. 19 of their members contracted the virus, and three of their members, uh, unfortunately, have passed away. So... Yes, would it be helpful if the government just said, hey, stop meeting? And yeah, well, maybe it would draw a bright line. But at the same time, I think as God's people, when we just really consider and pray about the situation, are there other ways in which we can continue to do the Lord's business? And at the same time, protect the general health and the, and the health of our own parishioners. And that's just one example, unfortunately, that had some very tragic consequences. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to think and just take those to heart. Be very careful about what we do. Put ourselves in the shoes of government officials and remember why there may be guidelines, maybe not specific requirements, but uh, to really heed those guidelines. Uh, you've, you've been in both worlds, really. You've ministered for several decades now. You've been a judge for several decades um, there's not many people that have done both of those types of activities. As you look at all of this and put it together, what other kind of advice or guidance might you give to our listeners today? I, I truly appreciate the passion that we as believers have for worshiping the Lord. And, and in, in light of this coming Sunday, um, Easter Sunday, listen, it's going to be hard on Easter Sunday not to want to gather with my fellow members of, of my local church, you know, to, to wrap my arms around them, uh, to, to praise the Lord that we all serve a risen Savior. I mean, it's going to be difficult. 
not to want to do that. And I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, wish that that was an opportunity that I had coming up this week. Yet at the same time, I really think the best thing that we can do as God's people is to subject to ourselves to the, the civil authorities. They have made some very good, solid recommendations to us. Uh, they're not taking away all of our liberties. They're not taking away the, our rights. Uh, they have asked us to, in the, in the matter of public health, to cooperate. And so I think that's the best thing that we can do at this point in time. Continue to pray for one another. Uh, exercise whatever alternative means we have of staying in fellowship and in contact. Uh, whether that be through uh, live stream services, social media, uh, just any form in which we can stay uh, encouraging to one another. And, and then putting this in the hands of God and letting God sort out the details, and bring us through this time in which hopefully very shortly we'll be able to get back together in full fellowship. Well, thank you, Judge Whitaker. That's some very helpful information, I think, for all of us, and especially as we approach Easter. It, it is going to be difficult. It's going to be hard, but uh, the Lord is still with us, and we do have each other, even if we are at a distance, and it's going to make all this all the better when we are together again. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. And thank you for the work that you, uh, we should have mentioned, you've also served on the foundation in many other ways. So we just thank you for how you've served our denomination, our, your state and our country. We appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.